This is White Plains Week, the weekly news roundup. With your moderator, John Bailey, editor and publisher of the daily internet newspaper, White Plains Citizen Net Reporter. Jim Benaroff, editor and publisher of SuburbanStreet.com and WhitePlains.com. And Peter Katz, noted broadcaster and journalist. White Plains Week, what's happened, who are the newsmakers, and what's in store for the future. The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented Fridays at 7.30 and again on Mondays at 7 p.m. here on Channel 76. Now, White Plains Week. Hello, everyone. From Cripple Creek to San Arcan, John Bailey, Citizen Net Reporter with White Plains Week, the City News Roundup Show. And today, we have as our guest the Assemblyman from the 89th District, Robert Costelli, here to talk about where Albany goes from here. But first, let's look, take a look at the news headlines coming up. In the news this week, of December 16, 2011, County Executive Robert Astorino vetoed 27 items Wednesday in the $1.69 billion county budget centering on board-replaced funding for non-county health centers, restoring 20% parent pay share for daycare, cooperative extension center funding, and invest in kids. The legislature is expected to override some or all of these vetoes. White Plains Councilman David Bookwall told WPCNR he is considering a run for the 89th District Assembly seat held for the last 22 months by Bob Costelli, sitting right here. Bookwald said he is running for the seat and is giving a, it a worthwhile consideration. He confirmed he has been approached to run and that he plans to make a decision whether or not to run after the holidays. The White Plains sales tax receipts are up 1.4% in November. If the city earns what they did last year the next seven months, they will earn $46.3 in sales taxes. Should they have a robust December and January, uh, they could hit $50 million for the physical year. And also, there is a shocker of the week, and uh, our special guest, Nancy King, because Peter and Jim are on assignment this week, Tell us about that shock over the way. Adam Bradley, back in court, and this time didn't work out so well for him. Adam Bradley was remanded to jail on a $10,000 bond for violating his probation. It seems that he has pocket dialed his soon-to-be ex-wife, Fumiko, three times. However, by the end of Tuesday, I believe it was, John, right. he was able to post the bond and is out now. However. WPCNR was not apprised of the conditions of his release. So, Adam Bradley, it's the story that just won't go away. And thanks for filling in for us today, Nancy King, with our guest, uh, Bob Costelli. Nancy is a freelance roving correspondent for Westchester County. Um, so, Mr. Costelli, 22 months in office, you've just got got finished with a wild and woolly surprise session in Albany. Uh, Nancy King, why don't you start the question? Mr. Costelli, it's been 22 mm -hmm. months. I can't believe it's been that long. How's it going up in Albany? Things seem to be a, a better, friendlier, more hospitable time up there. Absolutely. It, okay. it is, well, I think I told you when we first met, it's a more collegial atmosphere mm -hmm. than I thought it would be anyway. But uh, let me use the, the terms that my colleagues on both sides of the aisle had when I was first up there. They likened the first of my sessions when I went up there to the worst session they'd ever seen in 20 years. Well, if that's the barometer, then I will tell you that the second session that we just finished has to be one of the better ones. It was a much more cooperative atmosphere. You had a lot of bipartisan support for things. Uh, and I will credit our governor with the leadership necessary to make that happen. So, um, I, so far, I'm very happy with the way things are going on. The culture still has to change, the way things are constructed, the three men in a room concept. Mm -hmm. But by and large, people are getting along and we're getting things done, and I'm proud of that. Yeah, I'm looking at, at a sheet of 
things that you have been putting forth up in Albany, and it seems that you're a busy guy. Well, as, as you know, we were very pleased. Last week, not only did we pass the bill with the uh, the tax break, also relief from the MTA tax, which is one of my, oh my cause celebs, uh, and $50 million, let's not forget, for people who were ravaged by the flood in the last storm, mm -hmm. which is very important to us. But, you know, we were also pleased to receive $67 million uh, from the Regional Economic Development Council for 61 of our projects here in the Hudson Valley, one of which happened to have been, you know, a project I was very much concerned with, which is uh, $4 million going to New York Medical College for a new biotech incubator, which, if in fact this takes place, could make this the hub of a biotech center, which could in the future be something like the Silicon Valley of biotech. Yeah, look at California. Here we come. Absolutely. And, you know, our biotech incubator, once it's placed here, will allow us to do a multitude of things and keep companies. You know, Regeneron, mm -hmm. uh, Lynch Life, God bless him, decided to invest more money into the county and keep his business here, and we thank him for that in Regeneron. Um, he made a commitment to this area here, and a lot of other companies have made that commitment. And we want to let them know that, as the governor said, New York is open for business again. So that biotech incubator will allow us not to have to go to Jersey and, and Pennsylvania, which is where we had to go, mm -hmm. but to do this right in our backyard and become the hub for the biotech industry. Which certainly is going to create more jobs for the lower Hudson Absolutely. Valley. Absolutely. It'll create jobs. It'll create educational opportunities. You know, um, I represent three colleges and a medical school, so I'm, I'm thrilled about that one. That means more of our college students. Is, uh, that's the college professor in me speaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I see this as a win-win short-term and long-term for us. And there are many other worthy projects there throughout the tri-county you know, uh, tri area in mm -hmm. the Mid-Hudson that uh, have worked for us. So. So we're, we're excited about that yeah, one. Yeah, it's pretty exciting to see that, particularly after this morning when you, you turn on the AP and it says one in two Americans are living in poverty and that work is so scant in the United States. To see it emerging back in the lower Hudson Valley, awesome. Where do you see the money coming for these attractions to keep business from, A, leaving the state and also uh, attracting them to the state. This is one of the reasons, supposedly, for the tax cut. Well, you know, I, I, it's one of the things, that, and, and I, 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 I have to tell you, I'm proud of this one. More than two years ago, I campaigned on the idea that we needed to shrink the size of government, create public-private partnerships, look at outsourcing, you know, government services, and, and this new governor is doing exactly what I predicted we needed to do in order to save the state. Um, part of parcel is, of course, the Regional Economic Development Councils, which we just got uh, the $67 million for 61 projects for. But uh, the, the tax bill that we structured, because I know you're going to want to get into that one, was such that gave everybody a tax level that was commensurate with the level of income. You know, heretofore, that millionaire's tax, as it's called, and it was a misnomer because it kicked in at $200,000. That 2.5% surcharge hit families with a $200,000 adjusted gross income. Well. Two sixth grade teachers in my town who have seniority make 200000 a year, mm -hmm. and they're hardly millionaires. So we wanted to see a tax structure that was fair. We didn't want to beat up people who were successful, but in the same token, we wanted to give a break to the middle class. So it, it ranges literally from $40,000 in adjusted gross income right up to $2 million. Everybody in that area is getting a tax reduction to what is now the lowest marginal tax rate New York has had in 58 years. Now. Let me hasten to say, don't go out and buy a new Ferrari uh, and, and you folks at home, because <laughs> we're talking about hundreds of dollars per taxpayer, right. not thousands of dollars. But yeah, 50000 $50, you're at $200. $100,000 earner, you're at $400 tax cut. Yeah. 150000 650 600000 you're getting a 6000 And a million dollars, you're getting 23320 in tax cuts. And, t over, and $2 million, you're getting a $40,000 tax cut. Now, is are we really? That's quite a spread between forty thousand. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. By the way, the are. upper end of those numbers are accurate. Uh, mm, they are. Uh, the the we, the way I looked at them, obviously, they were more marginal at the top mm. end. There, they were larger at the top than they were at the bottom. No question. Yeah. The numbers on the bottom were correct, uh, but they didn't. They, as I calculated it, they didn't. They didn't come out to be quite as much. But. But either way, you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to punish people in this district, which, by the way, is the wealthiest district in the state of New York. You can't punish people for being successful because exactly. people vote with their feet. They pick up, they move their businesses, they leave. We live, you know, in a global economy, especially when you're doing e-business. You know, people can move in a heartbeat. And, and we want to know 
that New York's open for business. We want them to receive the necessary assistance to keep their businesses viable, which segues into the MTA tax. Mm -hmm. So how are we getting the money to to um, for to lower this MTA tax? Where are we getting the well, money to replace the, it? Uh, Is that going to hurt the MTA? Because we, you know, we, we originally talked yeah. about that. When you know, I, I looked at this and I was wondering, okay, oh, let's hope this is not voodoo economics here. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, what had happened was this: when we constructed the last budget, that budget was 131.7 mm -hmm. billion dollars at the state mm -hmm. level. The projected deficit was projected with the anticipated loss of the five million dollars mm -hmm. of sunsetting the millionaires yeah. tax. So five billion, so, don't you mean? Five billion, yeah, yeah right. five billion. We, that was already factored into that. Mm -hmm. Now, with the new tax bill, we gain back 1.9 billion of that revenue, mm -hmm. which shortens the deficit rather than lengthens it. The from what I can determine in talking to people on both sides of the aisle in the governor's office, the, the remainder of those monies will be made up for in uh, cuts and savings, uh, which is what we should have been doing all along. You can't tax yourself into, uh, out of a problem, you can only tax yourself into it, mm -hmm. but by, by, by cuts and spending smarter and not harder, mm -hmm. you know, you can have a much more manageable government. You know, you need to manage government better. That's what had been lacking and that's what we're beginning to see. You mentioned that uh, mandate relief is now the next job the legislature has to address to ease the tax situation counties and school districts mm -hmm. face. What mandates are we talking about here? Who's going to get court? Well, you know, the single biggest mandate we have in the state is, is the mandate of Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Medicaid is $53 billion of the New York State mm -hmm. budget, which is over 40% of the budget. Mm -hmm. And I may add, you know, over 40% of the Westchester County budget which becomes the, one of the larger parts of your right. property tax. So um, the MTA tax was one of the mandates that we gave relief for. Businesses that have a payroll now of a million and a quarter dollars will pay none of the MTA tax. Those businesses with a payroll of a million and a quarter to a million and a half will have that marginal rate go from 34 cents down to 11 cents and then those at a million and a half to a million and three quarter down to 22 cents. But of course, as you point out, quite correctly. It's, it's a, a reduction in revenue. Mm -hmm. So the only way to deal with the reduction in revenue is to come up with another revenue source mm -hmm. and or reduce spending, which is what we have argued for. As a matter of fact, last week when the bill was passed, and, and you know I voted for that bill. I was happy to see the tax bill come there. I wanted some of that money mm -hmm. specifically dedicated to mandate relief. Because while we helped our taxpayers, we helped our small businesses with the MTA tax relief, what we did nothing for was our school districts and the municipalities. In order to do something for them, we have to have mandate relief. Now, the biggest mandates are Medicaid. You've got other mandates like the Triborough Amendment, for instance, uh, Wicks Law, part of which, by the way, was reformed in this bill right. we passed last How week. How was that reformed? Well, basically what you've done is you've gone from a design, bid, build model to a design, build model which eliminates a lot of the competitive bidding that was required by law. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I use an example that if, if a local town wanted to build a wooden shed in the back of the townhouse and it cost you $3,000 in lumber from the local lumber yard, you'd have to submit that to five bids. By the time the whole process and vetting went through, you'd have spent the $3,000 to build a silly shed just in going through the administration of the competitive bid process, mm -hmm. which is a waste of taxpayers money and I might add a waste of our time. So a they school district could select a contractor of their choice even if he was higher. Exactly and of I course see. you know you've still got oversight from the comptroller's office. It's not going to be something where you can get away with hanky-panky but what you can do is streamline the process under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Well let's hope it 